The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good afternoon, folks. Welcome to the October 18th. The fantastic Friday edition of today's Trader's Edge show. Thanks so much for joining me here. Great to be with you. Uh, currently, we've got the Dow off about 171 points. We're certainly going to take a look at all these markets. But most importantly, what I want to be able to do is take a look at whatever instrument it is that you want to take a look at. So uh, just give us a call at 877-927-6648. Uh, if you can't uh, give us a call, uh, another way to reach out to me is send me an email, steve at tfnn.com. We've got several emails already in the queue. It's much easier for me if you could put radio show question inside the uh, subject heading of your email and of course inside the tiger's den like jimmy d uh you can uh, ping me private uh, public it doesn't matter just simply uh, reach out to me so let's go ahead and get this show started on fantastic friday of course this is tiger financial news network again i'm steve rhodes welcome to the show currently all the indices in the red the dow off 169 that's about six tenths of a percent s p down about half that from a percentage standpoint 11 points still to the downside, NDX off 1%, Russell down 6 tenths of a percent. Uh, the spot volatility index is up about 5%, 67 cents, trade down to 1446. Gold's off 3 bucks, silver down a penny, light sweet crude off 33, natural gas up just slightly out there, leading the uh, charge to the upside. It is intuitive surgical, $31 to the upside. Chipotle is up 12, Kansas City Southern's up 7, Crown Castle International up 4, uh, Rihanna Pharmaceuticals up 4. To the downside, it's Amazon. Off one and a half percent or 26 buckaroonies. Netflix is off 16. Booking Holdings off 14. Boeing off 13. Shopify down 11. So certainly things to take a look at. But we're going to begin uh, by uh, going and answering questions that have uh, come in. So the first one came in from a subscriber, came in from uh, Greg H. And Greg wanted me to review key reversal sessions. Now, the reason is because so I send out my newsletter each morning covers all of the covers all the markets basically now when I say all the markets what do I mean well we take a look at the international markets we take a look at what's going on in the uh, US uh, equity futures contracts out there searching for patterns look searching for signals to help us understand what the markets communicating to you and I we take a look at currencies commodities uh, the whole nine yards out there and uh, and then in the evening uh, most evenings I send out a end of day report end of day report has all of the major US indices Indices, charts, daily charts, weekly charts for all the major U.S. indices, each of the sectors inside the S&P 500, and then Stevie's Bob system. Bob system uh, tells you if an instrument is bullish or bearish, whether there's a topping or a bottoming pattern uh, that is out there. And then I also try to summarize, uh, obviously, our trades that we've got, as well as what took place in the market and what to anticipate in overnight action. Oftentimes, market generates a signal for you and I to understand what the market is communicating to to us. And so yesterday, what I pointed out, you and I looked at the following. So this is, in essence, a part of my Bob system, bullish or bearish, my market analyzer. It uh, Here's a small version of it, as soon as I can find it. Now, what you're going to see, I'm just putting over the short-term time frames. But if we took a look at this yesterday, uh, when the uh, update went out, 5, 6 o'clock, I don't recall the time, if we would have looked at, so here's a 30-minute, one-hour, two-hour, five-hour. We're looking at the, well, we're looking at the right-hand panels, the, the ones without any kind of color in them. The, the the other ones tell you whether the for that time frame whether the instrument is bullish or bearish what version of bullish or bearish it might be as well but over on the right hand side is where we take a look at stevie's roads momentum indicator topping signals and in the short term time frame we had them for the 30 for the one hour the two hour five hour now several of these are blank right now 30 and one hour because of the move once it gets beyond a certain point i go ahead and reset those because the top is gone come and gone not necessarily gone necessarily but it has come and it's done enough work uh, to be looking for a new signal out there. So yesterday, what I pointed out was the five-hour time frame charts were beginning to show topping signals. Now, when I say topping signals, that does not necessarily mean it's the ultimate in tops. But it lets you know that what the market is communicating to you and I is that its intent is to head back to support. So whenever there's a topping signal or a bottom,
bottoming signal, topping signal. You anticipate, uh, especially if you've got, you know, and, and this will work for your patterns, whatever they might be, or should work for your patterns, is really what I should say. You should be looking for when a uh, when that signal comes in for price to go down and test support. Likewise, if it's a bottom signal, price should move up to test resistance. So if we look at the five-hour time frame chart out here, now you know that in order for a pattern to complete, or most patterns, not the TD setup nine count as an example, but for most patterns to complete, Stevie's looking for the cavalry, looking for a bullish or bearish signal out there. Now, typically those are Japanese candlesticks. However, yesterday, at 2 o'clock, I didn't realize this till uh, early in the evening when I was working on the end-of-day reports, but it just so happened that at 2 p.m. on the five-hour time frame chart, one, we had the Rhodes Momentum Indicator pattern. Here's those little diagonal lines out there. I won't go into the depth of this, but if you'd like to learn it, I teach you. Just become a subscriber of Mastering Probabilities, an archive workshop, and you'll, you'll get the exact – you'll get the exact – there's like no secrets here. Um, and of course, many people say, why? why? Why do you give this away? Can't other people? Yes, I want other people to use this. And, and trust me, if everybody uses the same thing, there are so many instruments, so many time frames. It really doesn't matter. And these patterns, by the way, folks, they've been working ever since charting stocks was available. How do I know? Because I've taken this pattern, gone back to 18, I think I've got 1865 or 85 in the Dow out there. I know 1885 for sure. And, um, and, it's, and it's worked throughout time. So it's going to continue to work. So when, they, when we see them, we pay attention. Look at the bottom on a five-hour time frame here, back on October 3rd, inside of the uh, ES Mini. Nice, beautiful roads momentum indicator bottom. Now, price had been moving higher, doing less relative energy. And at 2 o'clock yesterday, we had a key reversal session. What is it? Now, you can do Internet searches on key reversal sessions. You're going to get confused. And I'm not saying I'm right. I'm going to share with you how I use a key reversal bar. As I take a look at the stuff that's been on the Internet out there, all they're really describing is a bearish engulfing candle or a bullish engulfing candle. Hello? That's a Japanese candlestick. A key reversal. There are three requirements. This is not a Japanese candlestick. There are three requirements that Stevie uses for a key reversal. And a key reversal, just like it sounds, it's a signal to suggest to you and I that the market is going to reverse. However, and my suggestion is really write these three rules down if you're not familiar with those rules. The first rule, and it doesn't have to be in this order necessarily, but the first rule is that the bar that you're taking a look at as a possible key reversal, and I watch people misuse this all the time. But if we take a look at the bar of the key reversal session, the high and low of that bar must exceed the high and low of the prior bar. So that's the first thing. But just that alone, because that can happen all throughout the charts out here. And so that itself, when you see it, is not the same key reversal that Stevie is talking about. Because you need conditions two and three. What are conditions two and three? Well, condition two is the market must, must be in an extended condition. How do you identify an extended condition? Well, one of the ways is the Rose Momentum Indicator. It's telling you the market has stretched itself. That's for sure. You can use an A to B equals CD pattern out there. Market was stretched. Rule number three, the close must be in the opposite direction of the trend. That's what took place at 2 o'clock yesterday. And so my signal to subscribers, well, you're going to have to wait until we get back from this break. If you're not currently using the TAS Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The TAS Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, TAS understands that in today's technological world, the use of top-flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the TAS Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. 
Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. We're taking a look at key reversal bars out here. The one we're looking at is on the five-hour time frame chart for the ES Mini. And when that formed, and in last night's update, I said we should anticipate that the markets are going to push lower in overnight action, whether it's overnight or early in the morning. And then we had some price targets for where price would push back to. Now, specifically, since we're live here, let's take a look at the responsibility of bulls and bears are to give us signals. So here we had the signal using, using Stevie's tools that said, okay, price should go ahead and push back to support. Now, support on this chart, there's a couple of them, but certainly one level of support is the bottom of its current bullish structured market profile. That level is 29.87. We're trading at 29.89. Now, yes, somebody out there might say, well, what about the big push lower during the day? So this candle here is uh, was being generated between 9 a.m. and 2 p.m. This candle will come to a close in about 40 minutes or so out here. And I'm not interested, not that I'm not interested, but I'm really not interested in the uh, upper and lower shadow or upper and lower wick out there. It's really the body of the candle that is the essence of price. The upper and lower wick or shadows out there are nothing more than a screaming Mimi. Now, I don't know where screaming Mimi came from, you know, but oftentimes it's like an episode of psychological distress. And that's really what I take a look at is an episode of psychological distress during this five hours out here. And it's really about so a close below support is what would trigger, OK, further moves lower. So in the case of the ES Mini, that further move lower, by the way, would be 28.55. That's where it last broke out using in the TD setup nine count. So that is a key reversal bar, not a Japanese candlestick out there, and it assisted us. Now, in addition to the five hour time frame chart, it was more than that. It was taking a look at the two hour time frame chart. So even though it may not have shown up on my my Bob system, my market analyzer out here, here you can see the two hour time frame chart. I think we looked at this yesterday during the break. Now an overnight action price found support, the bottom of its box, 29.89 out there. A close below that suggested, hey, look for 29.60 six to become a target uh, what you'll notice here but it's going to be easier if i look at some shorter term frame charts for you so let's go take a look at the 60 minute on the 60 minute out here what you're going to see is you're going to see a rose momentum indicator top uh, what we also can see is the a to b equal cd to the downside or otherwise known as in this case here because of the huge run to the upside 
as I pull this chart back, now I'm going to go ahead and, and uh, pull it forward out here, is an A to B equals CD pattern. So the A to B equals CD, we're going to start at the high of that rose momentum indicator. We're going to come down here. I don't have my, my cursor on, but what you're going to see here is the A to B equals CD. Now, in this case here, we've seen a 1 to 1.272 A to B equals CD pattern using the 60-minute time frame. We can see it may be in bar number four of a, a TD setup nine count. We're not going to worry about that because we're too early into that. But what we do have is right now, and in the next nine minutes, it uh, looks like we may have a bullish engulfing candle. So if you're a short-term trader or you're just trying to understand what the message of the market is doing on a short-term basis, this would be signaling to you and I that as long as this bullish engulfing candle tier forms by 1.30 p.m., we should anticipate that price is going to at least bounce up to 29.93. 2993 happens to be Stevie's red line. It went from green to red during the last hour or so, and we know that there's the phenomena with price and that line catching up to each other, doing a little bit of a kiss and tell out here. So that's a key reversal session. That's what we do here. That's what I do uh, in the uh, in the uh, evening edition, the morning edition, so that folks can really anticipate for whatever time frame they can understand what's going on. Now, the shorter term time frame charts may just simply be noise out there. Now. Uh, uh, we had a request inside the Tiger's Den from Jimmy D to take a look at the, he wanted to look at the cues and other things. So I'm going to kind of move into the cues by looking at the NQ out here. But in this case, I'm going to take a look at the daily time frame chart. So on the daily time frame, we're going to begin at least on the daily time frame chart. Now, remember, we just talked about the phenomena associated with uh, Stevie's line, the oscillator and change line, changing colors, the comedian or the chameleon in it. And when it does change colors, it tells you about price and the line catching up to each other in the ensuing bars. Well, if we take a look here, let me get my cross here. We take a look at the NQ, the line change color looks like on October 14th and 15th out there. And that told you and I, and as you can see, the one to one A to B equals CD pattern to the upside. And so far today is a bearish engulfing candle. However, and here's the important point, however, we should have anticipated, we did anticipate, that price and that line were going to catch up to each other. That is nothing more than a retracement back to support. Stevie's red line or green line is nothing more than a key level of support or resistance out there. And we're not so worried about the screaming Mimi aspect of the day. We're really focused on the close of the session. We're focused on the body of the candle. Now, in this case here, if the market were to close right now, we've got a Gartley sell pattern. Gartley sell pattern, it kind of looks like this. You know, you've got the A to B equals C to your scene, and I'm not going to worry about catching the swing points exactly out here. But just to color it in, it kind of looks nice. I'll get rid of the A to B equals C D. There we go. So there's your Gartley sell pattern. But the problem is support hasn't broken on the daily time frame. So do you take the short trade now? Do you take the short trade going into the weekend, believing that the change in trend has taken place? You can if you're an aggressive trader. I can see that. However, and I could have easily seen that years ago, as I did, without having this important tool, the oscillator on change line. Because you see, until I created that, what I didn't realize, I couldn't differentiate between just a common retracement and maybe something that was an actual top or a bottom out here. So, yeah, we've absolutely got a topping pattern inside of the daily chart for the NQ right now. That'll help you out, Jimmy D, with regard to the message of the Qs. This is a more important message than the one from the Qs. The Qs means you and I are just going to use six and a half hours of data, and I would never do that when we have more data to be able to help you properly interpret what the market is communicating to you and I. Now, if there were to be a close, there could be a close by day's end, below 78.48 or somewhere right around there because that number is going to change. That's Stevie's floating green line right now. Then that would communicate to you and I that price would head back to 75.68. However, Lee Corsa would say not so fast. And this one here is for Jay because we know that what Jay would like to know, as you do, inquiring minds want to know, hey, what's going on with the TAS market profiles? So when we go take a look at the equity futures contracts out here, what we're going to see, Jay, is that a new daily profile is attempting to form. And let me just go ahead and expand the chart so we know which one we're looking at. Okay, here we go. And what you can see here is Stevie's system. Let me move this uh, data bar over there, make it easy for everybody to see. Jimmy D, especially. 
Take a look at the bottom of that bar. That's 77.4785. So if price were to close below Stevie's green line, in the NQ, you would anticipate that price is going to make its way down to 77.47 out there. You would need a close below 77.47 to really say that a change in trend has taken place. This does not mean that price will not explore the entire profile. It is a bearish structured profile out there. And any key, any close below 79.12 today would suggest that that is going to be at least tested, 77.47. But Jimmy D, Jay, and everybody else that are out there, I caution you. That although the profile is attempting to form, I don't know if these are going to be the final numbers. We're using Stevie's advanced Doppler system out here. And so it's an early warning signal, but it's a beautiful thing. So, Jimmy D, that's what's going on inside the queues. Jay, there is your only new profile in the equity futures contracts for us to focus on. He wrote for TFN. Right? I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step by step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, uh, folks. Let's go out to uh, Jim in Massachusetts. Jim, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you today? I'm doing good. How are you feeling? 
I am improving each day. Uh, thank you for asking out there. So, uh, yep, uh, be back to normal, I hope, in about a week's time, just recovering from a little surgery out there. But uh, thanks for asking. Oh. Now, al is it alternative harvest that uh, you're calling about? Yes. I uh, Well, I have two questions. Um, one is uh, it, it looks like MJ is trying to form a bottom. I'm not sure. Okay. Okay. And the second question is, could you explain the relative energy? I hear you, a lot of times you uh, talk about relative energy is coming down with less relative energy, going up with more relative energy. Can you explain that? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, let's take so so let's get to your first question. Has this formed a bottom? Uh, one of the first things that we uh, like to do, Jim, is just understand where is an instrument trading in relationship to support, and we like to look at it on a daily, weekly, monthly time frame out here. So here's what we know about alternative harvest: it is trading above the top of its daily profile. That's at 1958. Today's pullback has been a test of that. If uh, I'm sorry, 1938 is the top of the box. If price closed above 1930. It could tell you of at least a change in trend and a further uh, bounce higher. Whether it's a bottom or not, I can't use market profiles to assist me in, in defining that. The weekly time frame chart says, hey, be careful. Be careful because price is well below the bottom of its box. On a weekly basis, this is not a bullish reversal candle, at least not just yet. Maybe it could be by the end of the day out there. And what I've, what I've noticed and take a look at charts is prices will continue moving lower until there's some type of bullish reversal candle. So it's not in place. And on the monthly time frame, price is below the bottom of its box as well, 27.13. So that's the flow that you're going against. With regard to tools that I use to help us identify bottoms, well, A to B equals CD patterns would be one of them. I'll open up this same chart out here. And as we take a look at uh, ticker symbol, by the way, folks, it's MJ, alternative harvest. There's not any way that I could really draw a rational on the daily chart, A to B equals CD to the downside. So we're not even going to attempt that feed out here. If I pull open the weekly time frame chart, I can say, OK, I can see an A to B equals CD. Now, are you looking at this as a longer term time period trade investment or uh, just as a trade trade? No, more of a longer term buy. OK, so here's the A to B equals CD pattern. The September 17th high is our A point. The B point out here is December 31st. The C point out here is uh, March the 18th. And that gives you a projection, a one-to-one -one projection of 1686. Now, price doesn't actually have to hit that level at 1686, but what needs to happen for your intermediate or longer term time frame trade in order for me to say you should put your money at risk, I need to see this pattern complete. And in order for the pattern complete, I need some type of bullish reversal candle. So we don't have that yet at 133 in the afternoon. We could by 4 o'clock. I can't control what's going to take place between now and then. But if we don't get it, then you want to hold off on that longer or intermediate term trade. And price doesn't have to stop at the one-to-one -one level. It can move to the – it could be an expansion of the A to B. And the expansions I use are Fibonacci expansions. Those would be 1.272, 1.618. That means 127 percent of the move of the A to B leg, or 162 percent, basically, of the move of the A to B leg. So it's 1077 is not out of the question, uh, taking a look at the intermediate term time frame. So I don't see a bottom there per se. As I pull over the weekly time frame, my white background charts, what they show is that this week is going to be week number seven of a TD setup nine count. For that pattern to confirm, we need to see the low of the count take place on week eight. In this case here, it's a weekly chart, week nine or the following week after that. So this could be weeks away before it would generate that intermediate term uh, bottom. The A to B equals CD pattern is still in play. If you got a bullish reversal, you'd be okay. The monthly time frame chart, we just don't have enough data. It hasn't traded enough for you and I to be able to use this to help us with our intermediate or long-term trade. So you asked the question about uh, price uh, when I say using energy. So when I take a look at energy out here, there's a couple different ways to do it. But the one way that I'm referring to is I'm referring to the relative strength indicator. Are you familiar with the RSI? Not really. That's, I'm not okay. really familiar with that. Got it. Okay. So if you'd like to become more familiar than just what we'll do in the next minute here, um, you know, 
sign up for the Mastering Probability newsletter. I don't care if you, you know, use it for two days, but there's a workshop on there. It'll go through it. It'll really help you out. But in essence, when we take a look at the relative strength index, I won't go through how that is created, but Wells Wilder is the guy, the gentleman that uh, created it. I've created uh, that, used that tool to create my own proprietary way to be able to use this to help us identify these tops and bottoms out here. And if you take a look at, in this case here, uh, if you're watching this on Tiger TV, if you're not, just simply go back to the archive. But on a five hour time frame chart, what we can see is that at two o'clock in the afternoon on October 2nd, that is when in this panel that we're taking a look at, the RSI was at its lowest low, but that was not the lowest low in price. The actual lowest low in price took place on a big move down at two o'clock in the afternoon on October the 3rd. And as price was pushing down, it was doing so with less relative energy. How do I know that? The relative strength indicator was a higher low. That's a diverging pattern out there, and that's what I'm referring to. If we take a look at the uh, session yesterday at 2 o'clock in the afternoon, the highest high from the relative strength indicator came at 2 o'clock in the afternoon on October 11th. And yesterday at 2 o'clock, price made a higher high, doing it with less relative energy, meaning the relative strength indicator had made a lower high out there. So those would be the answers to your two questions. To summarize, is now a buy bottom uh, inside of uh, MJ, not with regard to the tools that I use, but I do recognize, and I'm not saying that price won't move higher, because if price does close above uh, the uh, top of its daily profile, price is very likely to head higher in what I would consider to be nothing more than a counter trend move just yet. Okay, thank you. Does that help? Yes, it does. Uh, I appreciate your show. Oh, oh, and I appreciate you listening. And go back, watch the archive. Uh, you know, you'll see those five-hour charts out there. And again, if you really want to understand the details of it, you know, you're trying to uh, improve your technical analysis or learn some new tools, just subscribe to the newsletter. You can get it for 30 days. You can cancel on day 29. You're not charged uh, or anything, or you get your money back, whatever it might be. But it doesn't really cost you anything. So uh, thanks for listening, and I look forward to uh, talking to you again soon. Okay. Have a good day. You bet, you bet. Uh, we had, uh, let me get to the questions, the other questions that have come out here. Um, uh, Bradley writes in, and Bradley asks a question. Please let me know if the higher something goes, if you, meaning me, automatically, automatically get more and more bearish on the instrument due to the natural belief in cycle theory in your work. So, uh, first, I don't use cycle theory a whole lot. For me, cycle theory, in essence, would be, well, there's all different kinds of ways to do it, but, um, but so I don't really use cycle theory per se. And the reason that I don't, <clears throat> I mean, I'm familiar with the annual seasonal cycle, so I use that certainly as a guideline, but what I use to determine highs and lows, and so the, to answer your question, the higher something goes, do I get more bearish? I believe I was the first one with inside the TFNN family to say you should expect the NDX 100 to make its way to 8788. And you should expect the Dow to move up to 3483, even 39133. No, I do not believe that the higher something goes, I get more bearish. When it goes higher with less relative energy, then that tells us of a top. We'll be right back. If you're in a CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. 
If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, uh, folks. So one of our other listeners had written in earlier, uh, Michael in uh, Nashua, Mike in Nashua, uh, also asking about MJ. Specifically, he was asking, do I think that it'll go back and test the 1862 level or did it bottom already? So uh, I think we I think we covered that. Uh, look, if we get a bullish reversal candle today, uh, which would mean not not what I don't mean for the week. So if price makes its way up uh, and then 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 it might have bottomed. Michael. Uh, and then today was nothing more than a test of breakout support of the top of its daily profile. But without that bullish reversal signal, I'm unwilling to make that uh, call. Just simply, I'm a pattern recognition uh, person. Though I use these patterns to help us identify what the market is communicating. The markets can bottom without these patterns. It's just I look for these patterns to complete because they increase our probability of uh, success, of a winning trade out there. So at this stage here, Michael, really kind of need to see how this closes today. Um, but at this stage, as of 143, it looks like it'll probably do that and maybe even maybe even head lower. But 1840 would be the next level of support on any close below 90. 1938 out there. So thanks for writing in. And uh, so, so, so Bradley, you know what I was talking about here, Bradley, is is if I take a look at these long term, longer term, these are quarterly time frame charts, but they really help us to to get rid of the noise in the market, right? When we take a look at what's going on on a daily basis out here, up or down, it's a lot of noise. It's a, for especially for the long term trader out here. These are patterns that have been this. I had to go look, search for this, uh, search for this uh, uh, sheet here, which I think is several years old by now, a couple, at least a couple years old, many years old by now. But it was pretty easy in the NDX 100 when it broke through this long term consolidation, a consolidation that went back to 1997 or began in 1997. And it didn't break the consolidation with conviction until 2017 fairly long period consolidation. Once you break a consolidation, you have a measured move. The measured move takes us up towards the 1.272A to B equals CD. That gives you the 8,600 area. Do I think the price is going to stop there? Hell no. Now, are we going to get there overnight? No. But these markets, the U.S. markets, until something else changes, is where the global flow of capital is coming to. 
And no matter what all this stuff, even the political nonsense, and you've got to agree with me, no matter what side you're on, you don't have to agree with me, that there is a lot of BS before Steve nonsense that is out there. But with regard to the markets, stay focused on the longer term picture out here. The S&P's got a confirmed A to B equals CD to the upside on a quarterly basis. It's not even close to its target just yet. Well, maybe it's close from the standpoint of 3278, but this pattern says it's going well beyond 3278. It will not surprise me that we, uh, let's hope that we're together, and uh, we see the S&P at 4185 and the Dow at 39133. And it's just really important that, no, I don't have this belief that as the market continues to move higher, that that means that you get more bearish. Not at all. We just simply wait for a uh, pattern to complete. And then that tells us or suggests to you and I what the intent of the market's next move is. So I hope that that helps you out, uh, Bradley, with regard to that. Jay, you'll be alive. Uh, it, it, it's only a few years away. Wait, wait, nobody, everybody else closed their ears. Jay, it's likely just about, mm, let's call it 48 months or so, maybe 50 months away before we see that move. You heard it here, Act, but you heard it years ago. In any event, let's get back to the uh, radio show out here. Let's take a look at a question from Michael H. Michael wants to take a look at Kronos Group. That is C-R-O-N. That's the ticker symbol out here. So uh, the question is about yesterday's candle. Okay, so let's take a look at yet. Okay, what's the question out here? Uh, accumulation or distribution? Well, now that I don't know. Price increased dramatically on high volume, and it appears there was more selling than buying. When looking at the volume on a 30-minute time frame, uh, might consider going long at a buy point, but more interested in my analysis of yesterday's candle. Does it tell us any kind of a story? And you, you, you take a look at this specific candle here. You see volume out here, and that was, in essence, volume off of the bottom. That was a sign of strength. So for just simply to use Tom's book, The Art of Timing the Trade out here, when something's making a bottom, and I'm not saying that it made a bottom out here, but just simply utilizing those tools, what he would be looking for is a sign of strength out there. And it moved higher yesterday. It was not the bottom candle, so it didn't make a high volume low or anything like that, but certainly came off. And Tom would suggest to you, or at least the book would suggest to you, maybe Tom wouldn't suggest it, so I don't want to put words in his mouth. I will just tell you my interpretation of that meaning of a sign of strength is you want to wait for a light volume pullback. Well, uh, Michael, you've got that light volume pullback out here. Now, maybe price is going to pull back even further, which would be pulling back to 781 and 801. That's your swing point at this stage here. That's the swing point from October 14th. And if you're fortunate enough, this is just simply using the art of timing the trade or Stevie's art of using timing the trade out here. If you were to see price get back to at least 795 and reject that level, meaning close back, above it and do it with less than 4 million shares, well, that would be your signal that you had the sign of strength and price pulled back on lighter volume. Now, what we do know in the month has an end is price is testing the level of support, the bottom of its monthly profile at 836. But let's go take a look at that weekly chart. Remember, you and I, we began the show because of, uh, because of a question that Greg H. had. It was a key reversal candle. Remember, in a key reversal candle out here, you must be in an extended condition. Well, shoot, you and I can just take a look at this chart and see we're in extended condition out here with regard to its move down. Number one has been accomplished. Number two, the bar high and low must exceed the prior bar high and low. It's done it. And number three, you have to have a close in the opposite direction of the trend. Well, as of 1.49 in the afternoon, we've got it. Now, if we put, take a look at the weekly time frame chart, should you go ahead and enter a purchase right now? And Stevie's going to say, whoa, Nelly, not a chance. Why not? Remember, we also talked about the phenomena when Stevie's green red line changes color, which in this case here it did on the week of August 30th, that it tells us we're going to see an eventual test of price in that line. And that line is red. And the worst thing you could see is a test of that line and a rejection out here. And that is what has taken place this week. Now, Stevie's red line is at 1069 right now. The actual high so far has been 1056. So someone can say, well, geez, we've missed it here by 13 pennies. Look, 
That can be your interpretation. It ain't Stevie's interpretation. So, yeah, we've got a bullish candle. I don't think we have an A to B equals CD to the downside yet. I think that price is lower out here, uh, a tad lower. The one to one is 627. But at this stage here, what I would say is I wouldn't touch it with a nine foot pole, which also means I wouldn't touch it with a 10 foot pole. Because what you've gotten on a weekly time frame is actually a bearish message out here for Kronos Group, C-R-O-N. Again, it doesn't mean that a bottom hasn't formed. It's just that Stevie doesn't see it with the tools that I use here to help you buy bottoms or sell tops. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. If you're a trader in the market looking for exposure to gold or gold mining equities, then now is a perfect time to sign up for Tom O'Brien's Gold Report. The summer is over, gold is trading back above $1,500, and the 10-year treasury is hovering at around 1.5%. Tom O'Brien has been writing his weekly gold report for almost 18 years. There's no one that knows more about how the gold market trades and how gold mining equities react. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, Tom Tom publishes his weekly gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. As of September 3rd, Gold Report subscribers have five active open positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 38% for each position. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up today by visiting TFNN.com. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powerful by highly concentrated fulvic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. This is David White. Stay tuned because coming up next is the Power Trading Hour right here on TFNN. Folks, so two more instruments to get through. Uh, Victor had called in, uh, and he was asking about ticker symbol TUFN, Tuffin Software. Victor's question was, is this pulling back on light volume? Is this a good time to uh, buy? So when we take a look at this. Uh, this is an IPO that came out back in April of this year, and everybody that is a holder of the stock is underwater uh, for the most part, with the exception of just a few shareholders out here. So nobody is having fun 
at the Tuffin party. Is it pulling back on light volume? Well, if you take a look at the most recent swing point low, October 14th, at 293,000 shares. Right now, you're at 166. Seems like lighter volume. If your question is now a good time to buy, my answer is going to be no. Now, not that this may not have bottomed out here because it does have a Rhodes momentum indicator bottom signal. Did that on October 16th when it generated the bullish uh, bull sash candle out here. Here's the reason why I'm saying no out here, Victor. I'd like you to have more proof, especially on an instrument like this when everybody is underwater. Now, everybody being underwater, just so you know, that means that if this instrument does move higher, you're going to have lots of selling pressure. I mean, in this instrument alone, think of the folks at 29 and 28 and 31 and 32 and 24 and 22. And think about what's going on in their minds right now. Do you think they're doing the little rain dance, the little prayer that says, please, please, trading gods, just let me get my money back out here. Now, here's the issue. The other issue you have is that price has not been able to get above the bottom of its daily profile, 1657. So that is a resistance level. And I Say, be very cautious out there. The last one was GASL. We've got a couple of listeners that are interested in that. The question is, has this bottomed out here? Well, right now, price is trading below the bottom of its daily profile, and that level is $6.56. If it closes below that level, before four o'clock, it looks like it's going to close below that level at the end of the day, and you just have a small, small little loss on that. I'd say just take the small loss because you're not getting the warm fuzzies in GASL. Hey, folks, thanks so much for being here. Have a fantastic weekend. I look forward to seeing you on Magnificent Marvelous Monday. Stay tuned. David White, your favorite polar bear, is up next. Tom O'Brien will take us on home from 3 to 4, and I'll see you Monday. Take care.